I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCTMPBS SoCal, and today we're doing a special version of the Reporter Roundup concentrated on the census in partnership with KPCC and LAist. And thank you all for coming today as guests. Uh, let's start with you, Carolyn. What are the stakes for Los Angeles in this census? Right, the stakes are very high because LA County has one of the biggest populations of people who are considered hard to count in the nation. And this is because we have so many dense units and apartments here, and not to mention the technology and language barriers. So this means LA in particular is at risk of being undercounted, which would be a problem because resources people depend on are based on the census. Big one is health services, but the count also determines money for public schools, affordable housing and highways. And it's not just about money. The census also tells us who we are as a community. It can help the government make better decisions in disasters, but this is only possible and effective if people are recognized by filling out their form. And in LA, only 64% of households have done that on their own. California as a whole just surpassed their 2010 self-response rates, but in LA, we're still behind. Data from the census determines political representation in local, state, and federal government. Douglas Johnson is president of the National Demographics Corporation and a research affiliate for Claremont McKenna College. And I wonder if you could talk us through the risks California and LA face in terms of representation. Sure. As you mentioned, the number of congressional seats you get is dependent on the census count. And so if you come out undercounted, then you lose out on representation both in the House and in the Electoral College, because that's driven by the number of House members you have. So as a state, we have been relatively slow growth and we're probably gonna lose a seat. If we have an undercount, if our numbers trail the other states, we could very well lose two seats, in fact. And that would be a significant loss of voice in Washington, D.C. There has been a lot of uncertainty over when the count will end. Alejandro Ramirez Zarate is here from Advancement Project California. And I wonder what the uncertainty means for census advocates and what challenges it presents. Thanks so much for that question. You know, we've known that LA County has been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19 and we've had to adjust our census outreach. So much uncertainty we've had to adjust, be flexible and live into, get creative in how we engage our communities, even amongst the most difficult circumstances and uncertainty that we've been facing for quite some time now. No, we've been able to consistently engage using trusted messengers that are well positioned to do that with our communities, using eloteros, uh, the person that you buy your lotes from, on the street corners, in different ways, creative ways that we've continued to engage digitally and linguistically and culturally appropriate ways with our communities most at risk. But still questions and doubts remain, especially from historically undercounted Black and brown communities, folks that are undocumented, have so much fear, and, and this is adding to that uncertainty and fear. And uh, this means that we still have additional time to account and engage our residents in language in a way that makes most sense to them, but we're still facing so much uncertainty and so much fear, uh, rightfully so, from folks that don't know whether this administration wants them counted or not. And I want to give the last word today to Didis Katagi, director of the California Census Office. The state dedicated $187 million to the census, which is more than any state has spent on the count. Do you think it was worth it? And, and what do we still need to get done? It was absolutely worth it. As Doug mentioned and Carolyn mentioned, there's much at stake. And when you think what we've done with our creative, creative partners that Alejandra mentioned, we have managed to get 10.5 million California households to respond. We've outperformed the top 10 states in really convincing the historically non-responsive households, our hardest to hardest count, to self-respond. And we really feel like self-response, if you respond, it's going to be a lot more accurate than if somebody knocks on your door or they take a proxy. We weren't going to leave it in the hands of the federal government to reach out to Californians because we know our partners are really the best ones suited to make sure that everyone feels like they're visible and that they can stand up safely, confidentially to be counted. Thank you, Ditas. And make sure if you have not done it, please feel the census. Thank you for tuning in today. We will see you on Monday.